And joining us now from Harare is Morgan Changarai. Mr. Changarai, certainly an historic day in Zimbabwe and also uncharted territory, a bloodless coup, now a transition. Can this remain a nonviolent process? Yes, it's an extraordinary situation, uh, but I am quite confident that it will remain peaceful and that uh, it will remain nonviolent. Are you the man then to lead Zimbabwe now that Mugabe is officially out? Is that your goal? Zimbabwe will be led by a process and by a leader who is chosen through an electoral process. And uh, I cannot determine that at this stage. You were outside Parliament today with the people. Some of them are casting you as the next leader of Zimbabwe. If that happens, will you guarantee the safety of Mr. Mugabe and his wife? Well, first of all, it's never been, for me, it has never been a personal issue. Uh, in fact, it's regrettable that the old man has decided to drag this up to this stage. And I think in terms of our culture, we should have given him that dignified exit. Unfortunately, uh, that has been spent. Um, should we go to the next stage? I don't think that I will be in any position of being ret retributive or even engage in manner that will put him to, to harm um, uh, in spite of his defiance. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, he should heed the, the call by the people. It's now stage the sunset is arrived, so we should heed that. Now, it, it's interesting that you say this is not personal for you. I mean, this, is, this was your nemesis, the man responsible for your imprisonment and torture over the years. To see him brought down now, for you personally, how is this transition? Personally, it is, um, it is satisfying to note that like all dictators, uh, uh, they end... Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, like all dictators, the end is sometimes very, very difficult. And in this instance, um, he cannot be calculated as one of the dictators who fell on the wayside in the wrong way, regrettably. Um, so it has never been a, a personal, for me it has never been, it has been a principal disagreement. And it has been a fight uh, for democratization that he knows uh, was never meant to engage in any violent overthrow. So as we, as we, we engaged in elections, um, he decided to not to observe the rules, but to violate those. Are rules. you suspicious of the motives, both in the impeachment proceedings and the motives of the ruling party is a democratic zimbabwe their priority also no as i said in the uh, when i was addressing the crowd what is important is that we now need to enter an irreversible process uh, of irreversible democratization process otherwise this whole effort would have been in, in vain uh, what does that mean it means that we need to put in place uh, mechanisms for free and fair and credible election process. We still are due for elections in 2018, and I'm sure that the maximum period is about August. So we have got eight months in which to prepare for those elections. And I'm sure by then we should be in a position uh, to create conditions for free and fair elections, voter registration, no violence and all that. So for us, uh, it is a non-negotiable position uh, if we have to enter a new phase. And can that happen with Mugabe and his wife remaining in the country? Well, what will happen? No harm will be intended unless there are crimes committed that can be discovered. I mean, that will be a different process. Uh, as far as I am concerned, uh, any criminal prosecution must arise out of the, the crimes committed, uh, which can be established beyond any doubt. But as far as I am concerned, people just want him to step aside because of old age. And uh, about his wife, it also depends whether she has committed any crimes. And former Vice President Mangawa is now to be sworn in. Are you supportive of his leadership? 
Well, that's, that's far off the mark because as far as I'm concerned, we haven't even begun to engage. Uh, if we are to engage to say how do we, how do we restore the country to legitimacy, then uh, that discussion will include, of course, some transitional mechanism. I'm not even talking whether I'm going to save Andam Nangaga or otherwise, because that's not a priority. Our priority is to ensure that we create conditions that will return the country to legitimacy, and that's, that's my preoccupation. And are, are you confident you can accomplish that? I'm confident that uh, the people of Zimbabwe want they don't want a reversal. They want, don't want to return to Mugabe's uh, phase of rule. They want to move on to a situation where their freedom is guaranteed. And I am quite certain that those who would like to instill a sense of freedom and a sense of confidence nationally and internationally uh, must realize they have a task uh, to implement that, uh, those kind of that kind of culture and value. How can the Canadian government help Zimbabwe in this process? Well, Canada is part of the Commonwealth, and I'm sure part of the international community. One of the things that I think Canada and others have to demand is that we want to see an irreversible process of free and fair elections. Uh, and and uh, if there is any help that can come that route, that will help us conduct elections. I mean, in 1980, we had the... Commonwealth contingent, which came to supervise elections here, and, and more can still be mobilized. We are talking here of the United Nations supervising our elections, and I'm sure that uh, Canada can make a contribution in that regard. And what about the, the economic future of Zimbabwe? What does your country need in a post-Mugabe era to open up to the world democratically and fairly? You know, economically, our country is on, on its knees. And as much as uh, foreign direct investment and foreign aid give us a kickstart to our very dire situation, it will be helpful. Uh, and that will require uh, our economic ministries to work out a plan, uh, a recovery plan. Uh, we did it during the GNU days. And I think the support of the international community helped uh, at least to resuscitate the economy. Timing is so critically important right now. People want change. They don't want another dictatorship. They want jobs. How fast do you have to work to get this process fairly and democratically underway? Unfortunately, they will have to have the patience to wait because the delivery is one thing, expectation is the other. So they have to give the new dispensation an opportunity to set the process to recover the economy and to create conditions for economic recovery. Otherwise, it will be uh, foolhardy to pretend that overnight uh, all these things will be delivered on the table. However, people want to be inspired uh, by the conditions that exist, uh, uh, that are created so that uh, they are able to go about their economic activities much more freely. So it's not going to be a one-day wonder. It's something that uh, is going to take time. But uh, bearing in mind that uh, Rome was not built in a day, so we are very conscious of the expectations of the young people. Rome wasn't built in a day, as you say, and Mugabe has been in power 37 years. Did you ever imagine this day would come? Well, we, some of us were now going into a phase of exasperation because... Uh, we tried the democratic route. We won the 2008 election. He refused to go. And so people were frustrated to say, how are you going to get rid of him? So, so as far as we are concerned, uh, it's a very convenient end and uh, a very appropriate and irreversible process that will give the people of Zimbabwe an opportunity to move forward. That's what they have been crying for all these years. Were you involved in how this unfolded last week with the military? No, uh, I was not involved with the military, uh, but um, it may have been a very convenient, a very convenient intervention, even though in questionable circumstances, the, circum the, 
the outcome uh, had very popular support amongst the people. And I come back to you then, the next stage for you to try to continue keeping the peace and, and move this process forward. Is that your primary priority? My priority is to ensure that uh, we move the country from this uh, sad para state to a more acceptable uh, nation that, that we definitely deserve because we are really a potentially rich and a potentially educated country. So uh, opening up for, for, our, for our country will give us opportunities that have been missed. And do you want to be the next leader of Zimbabwe? No, the, the, the question is that I told you earlier that the next leader, uh, we don't want to go through another Mugabe phase. The next leader of, uh, of, of, of Zimbabwe must be elected. Who knows? There may be one, but there are other contestants uh, to the leadership. So I'm, I'm, I'm not at all uh, privatizing this opportunity. Mugabe wanted his wife, Grace, in power. Will she put up a fight no, now? No, no, no. I think Grace is just a, a forgotten chapter. Uh, she can't do any fight now. Forgotten chapter, maybe certainly a long one. We thank you so much for speaking with us today and wish you luck in this transition for your country. Thank you. We deserve all the support. Thank you very much.